chat today is december 4th but we have the patch notes a day early because the game will be updated to season date december 5th 2023 at about 2 p.m eastern 11 a.m pacific so we have it a day early and the complete notes are here in written form but before we do that, I think it would actually be advisable for me to react to my own damn video covering this patch note. I think it's easier. Katie, the community manager, has posted it, and let's go through each and every single one. So when Season 8 launches tomorrow, Malgo will be released. We already know all his abilities, so I'm skipping all of that stuff. The new thing here is the Battle of the Beasts. First thing we have is fight in a powerful brawl with epic and powerful Grand Beasts in a 4v4 PV pve game mode the battle of the beasts in the, cl in the in a clash of grand beasts protect yours while coordinating with your team to defeat the enemy beasts you'll be able to play malga for free as the only tank in this mode or try your hand as one of the many other hunter themed heroes and tear through the grand beasts health while trying to avoid powerful abilities may the best hunters win Okay, so that's gonna be the fun arcade mode right off the top. The next thing we have is a Winter Wonderland, which won't be here right away. It says, ring in the holidays for the Winter Wonderland. Check out the heroes celebrating in style with holiday skins. You get challenges. Unlock a free legendary skin of your choice. Choose from the stylish formal wares of Cassidy, Bap, or the cozy Winter Jammies Alari skin. Dive into the action with returning fan favorite event modes like May, Snowball Offensive, Yeti Hunter. Oh yeah, this is classic Overwatch. We've been having these for years. New challenges, rewards, Winter Wonderland launches on Tuesday, December 19th, so two weeks from now. Two weeks of Battle of the Beast, then it probably goes two weeks of Winter Wonderland. And then we also have weapon skins. We actually have visuals of all of this in the Overwatch 2 uh, Call of the Beast whatever uh, trailer, which we'll also watch in this video. Uh, it means you can't get them all. Yeah, it seems like you only have a choice to pick one of the a couple of legendary skins, and then the rest might be in rotation later on. That's the idea that I get from it, but I'm not really sure about the cosmetics in that capacity, but let's keep going. Introducing weapon skins, a new way to customize your heroes. They have a hard light theme for Ryan, Reaper, and Mercy with sleek designs, custom visual sound effects that can be equipped with any of these hero skins. Look for other weapon skins in the future seasons. So they're basically saying we're excited about weapon customization. This is just a first step. And as we create more weapon skins, we want to hear what you love about the skins. Your feedback is key as we evolve weapon skins and introduce new looks and ways to customize your hero. Okay, if we're doing this, my feedback is weapon inspects. Um, general updates in the game, we have endorsement changes, the requirement to reach level five, the elusive endorsement level five. If anybody here in the chat or in the comments is a level five endorsed player, you are an anomaly because that shit is rare. I saw Emong's level five. I think uh, somebody who, who was in here in the chat that was also five. I remember somebody here was. I saw a level five endorsement, which is crazy. The decay at four is reduced slightly and the decay at five is reduced. So now you can find level five. Okay, the next thing we also have is Hero Mastery, uh, which will launch January 2nd. So basically they're, se they're sequencing season eight. So there's always a bit of content. It goes Battle of the Beast, then to Winter Wonderland, then to uh, Hero Mastery in the in the mid in the last half of the uh, season. Five week event featuring a new course each week with new challenges and cosmetics. So basically it's going to start with five. It's going to start with Lucio and then each week, the next week will be May, the next week will be Diva, the next week will be Echo and the final one will be Genji. So they're not dumping all five in one go. They're going to blue ball you deliberately because they think that'll help retention. Lucio's courses will unlock January 2nd. New course for a new hero will be available every week for the next four weeks, basically. One other thing they're going to do is also add a hero mastery replay for the speed runners, right? You can do, um, you can now replay bookmarks, blah, 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 blah. You can instantly teleport to moments during a run to optimize your hero mastery. If you love hero mastery, this stuff is good for you. Reticle changes is basically crosshair changes. So specific heroes with multiple weapons have separate crosshairs now. So Ana, when you're unscoped versus scoped, it changes your, you can make two separate crosshairs for it. Ash, same thing. Bastion, Lifeweaver, Mercy, Ramatra, Widow. Um, I did an example in my video later where you'll see where for Ramatra, the punches and the Omnic form, when he's in the mage Omnic form, I have a small circle, and then when I'm punching, I can do a big pummel circle to kind of get a better crosshair. I actually think more customization is always better, and this is always an opt-in. Um, not a bad thing to ever add these things, so good job, Blizzard. Unranked lever penalty update. So if you guys didn't read the blog article, they said people leave 90% of their quick play games. 90. Some of the worst actors, the worst defenders of, of quick play levers and getting all the backfillers. It's very frustrating to play that mode. So 
they are going to have to increase the effort to discourage players from leaving games and impacting the experience. So now they're going to increase suspension time. We're leaving four out of your last 20. So 20 percent of your games will result in a 20 minute suspension from being able to queue anything six out of 20 30 percent of your games will be a four hour suspension holy so this means like obviously if you have kids or you uh, you know you have like other priorities that something comes up once in a while that's totally fine but just think about it. if you're gonna sit down and play a game don't rage quit um but obviously if something comes up you know and you leave one or two games in the next 20 like the shit happens i get it but you know these are for this is to stop bad actors okay this these suspension thresholds only occur when you leave multiple games amongst your recent games we know this impacts people who have issues on connection we would encourage testing your connection in custom games or the practice range as you troubleshoot your own connection it's 2023 test your connection in the training range before you queue up for anything and finally the final thing before we get into the balance patch is competitive play updates mmr decay all this stuff is only for season eight because in season nine in february then the season after this it's a brand new revamped competitive system with that brand new rank above gm they call it ultimate i hope they rename it to titan and a whole new system where it actually shows your actual progress within each one no more of those update cards but for now this seems like a temporary uh, band-aid fix for season eight where we talk about mmr decay only occurs for comp play at the start of a new season not applied to roles that qualify for a rank um so if you don't play a certain role it will decay so for me i'm gonna decay on dps and tank probably um blah, blah 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 okay that's just for this season that's tomorrow okay now we have the hero updates and rather than read it out let's watch my own video and give opinions yeah all right let's do it let's They're start from the beginning the maximum ultimate charge preserved on hero swap from 25 percent to 15 percent that's a big change. The devs comment that swapping heroes is fundamental to the gameplay of Overwatch, and this ultimate charge refund mechanic has done a great job of decreasing friction there. It has helped matches feel less one-sided as it functions as a soft comeback mechanic. However, it has also helped reinforce the perception that it's almost always an advantage to counter swap upon dying which ideally isn't always true and requires some consideration due to how powerful ultimate abilities can be. Okay, so I think this 25% to 15%, my honest opinion is that it's not enough. I think you can just go back to 0%. I mean, they're just, they're iterating. So they're, they used to have it at 30, they nerfed it to 25 and now to 15 to see, to like not incentivize switching as much because they're saying basically that alts are powerful despite if the other person is picking a counter iterate off this but i actually in my honest opinion they can go to zero again the game would still be fine in my opinion if it's just one or two enemies on the other team that are playing hard counters to you or like a counter hard to say if it's hard or soft it's a bit subjective if they have four or five heroes that are actually just destroying you like you literally can't do anything about it sure like i actually think it's worth it to swap but like i've always said like you literally do not have to play if they play winston you don't have to just instantly swap the diva because diva counters winston when they rely on a counter swap crutch i actually think it makes them worse as a player because they don't actually learn how to play around like unoptimal matchups suboptimal matchups next doomfist tanks doomfist his meteor strike ultimate now regenerates 75 health per second while in the air you can stay in the air for a maximum of four seconds so you can recover up to 300 hp now that's a huge buff to it however the ultimate cost is going to be increased by 16 percent the devs comment that one of the most effective uses for an ultimate ability like meteor strike is to save it as an escape in order to grab a health pack instead of using it against his foes Doomfist will now recover health during the targeting phase so that it can be used more offensively. For Junker Queen, the scout- Okay, for Doomfist, I think this is a net buff. Okay, listen, Doomfist mains will think anything that's a buff and a nerf is a net nerf to anything. I mean, he's entitled to his own opinion. He's actually a Doom main, so maybe he knows, he probably knows the hero way better. Actually, not even probably, he knows the hero better than me. I do think Doomfist mains have a little bit of an inherent bias. I do think the healing is a net buff, despite 16% alt cost increase. There's going to be times where you have to hold on to your ultimate anyways, before you um, have to fully engage. The 16%, of course, is a nerf, but I think this out outshines it. You lose complete fight tempo if you have to use your ultimate to literally fly away and go to a health pack, because that certainly happens. The fact that you can stay in the air and still re-engage with nearly full 345 HP, especially if you're low, 300 HP for four seconds, and as soon as you land, you get over health. So you're 400 plus HP again, if you do decide to stay at the, at the the all the way at the end. And then you get all your cooldowns back because you did decide to wait all four seconds. So you come down, 
you if you hit two people isn't it 50 over health per target or something like that he's gonna be a over he's gonna be pretty healthy and he has full rotation and an empowered punch i i i, I can't see how this is a nerf sorry quick don and other doom mains who are just saying this is bad no i i don't see it sorry Junker Queen, the scattergun spread is gonna be reduced by eight percent. Uh huh. Next comment that tightening the spread. I don't actually think they needed that. I actually think Queen is pretty good. I mean, this is pretty minor. Spread by eight percent. Like, if you look left and right, it's nice for sure. It helps you at the mid, mid to long range. But when you're up at close range, it's probably not gonna feel too different. But uh, people will take it. I still actually think Queen is really good. There's gonna be some matchups where she's a bit outshone, but like she's really fun and pretty good. By eight percent. The devs comment that tightening the spread on Junker Queen Scattergun will make it more effective at ranges. It ranges. Targets and give her yeah, slightly more true. Presence before Does she need it? No Probably not, but I think it's welcome. It's minor enough that it's like, it's pretty negligible, I'd say. Okay, so now they're buffing Mauga. I did not actually get to play them during the free weekend, but I looked at the list of things and they really took the feedback and gave Mauga a third leg. A third heart is what the top comment was in some video that I saw. I forgot who said it. If we read through these notes, it's actually kind of insane what they did to him. I mean, he uh, most people did say he felt did, he felt kind of weak on the free weekend, but like you read everything they did to him, and it's like, okay, this is quite a lot. Let's go through them. First, his base health is being reduced from 500 to 350, but instead is being replaced with 150 armor. Ignore my audio. I actually read it wrong because that's pre-roll queue bonus. Basically, he was all white health before, and then he got 150 armor. 150 armor is way more valuable because it's 30% damage reduction. If he takes a little bit of chip and your supports continue to heal on the top and to keep refreshing his armor with some over with some heals on the top, it'll actually be really good. When you stack that with the Berserker passive where he gets over health on top of it, that helps health goes first before it gets chipped into armor if you can bring it up to that point so this is actually a big buff his head hit volume basically the hitbox around his head is also reduced by 15 percent which makes it harder for the enemies to headshot you that's not that's a big buff too uh we all know how how valuable hitbox changes are they change it on life weaver they've changed it on kiriko also all his hair here is not part of the hitbox by the way if you see mauga like this because some skins he has like ponytails and things like that Hair is not part of the hitbox. Okay, so. From 40% to 50%. Yeah, okay, so the overhealth, 40% to 50%. Remember, people don't know what this passive does. Any critical damage you do to a person grants you overhealth for 50% of the damage you do. So if they're burning, all your shots are crits, you naturally gain some overhealth. If Ash dynamites a person, it is also burning so that you can just fire your right gun and continually get some overhealth. You get a maximum of 150 overhealth as well. Now for the incendiary and volatile chain guns, the spread for firing both guns is being reduced by 15%. The fire rate... Okay. If you guys don't know, when you fire one gun, the recoil is much tighter. If you do end up firing two on Mauga, the spread gets a little more ridiculous. So you can start incendiary and then use just uh, the headshot ones at a range. But when you're up close, you should definitely fire both when the spread doesn't matter as much. But from longer distances, we'll just do both. So uh, you can fire both at maybe medium to closer now with higher effectiveness. Reduced by 15%. The fire rate multiplier for firing both guns at the same time is being reduced from 25% to 0%. Okay, and then now you'll actually see, they actually did, you used to be able to fire both really, really fast together. So he was really good at, at close range, but kind of shit at medium to longer ranges when the spread got a little ridiculous. So now um, they're kind of just kind of tweaking that kind of play style a little bit more. The damage per shot is being increased from 4.5 to 5. Five per bullet, that's big. That's over a 10% DPS increase, right? Pretty much a 10%. 4.5 times 10% is 4.5 plus 0 0.45, which is like 4.95. That's pretty close. Basically 10% DPS upgrade to both guns, right? Each gun does 5.5 five instead of 4.5, instead of 9 to 10. Well, I guess from 9 to 10, it, it is actually basically uh Damage fall-off range is increased from 25 to 30 meters. That's a buff. People still uh, get confused what fall off means. Basically, your your damage bullet starts scaling down the further you are away from it, a target. So at, previously at 25 meters, which is a little around like this line, a little closer, your five damage per bullet would probably start start tapering down to four, three, two. But now that tapering down or the fall off won't hit until you're at 30 meters. So you're basically stronger at closer and medium ranges. And his movement speed penalty is being reduced from 20% to 15% per gun. That's a buff, it means you can 
So when you fire one gun, you got 15% penalty. If you fire both, you have 30%. Previously, it used to be 40 and 20. So yeah. A little bit quicker while firing. Overrun can no longer be interrupted by hack and... That's a big buff to uh, the Sombra matchup. Sombra can just stop him in his tracks and it would be so annoying. Damage reduction while running, 30 to 50, is a big... Basically fortify, which is quite nice. Although you can be headshot. So previously, I think people were saying the feedback of Mauga when uh, when running in the overrun is like, if he ever charged into somebody, he would just take like a gazillion damage. Like if I'm a Baptiste, you know when Darker Queen's about to pop her ult and I pop a window, I can actually triple headshot her right in the face and it would do so much damage. I killed a queen mid ult because of that. The damage reduction while running is increased from 30% to 50%. Finally, for his cardiac overdrive ability, the life steal is being increased from 60 to 70%. People forget that Cardi this is the whole team, by the way. Anybody within his Cardiac Overdrive circle, they all get lifesteal. So that is all of Mauga's buffs from BlizzCon weekend. That was literally like, I didn't count, but like eight buffs and like one small nerf to the double fire, fire gun thing. It is actually quite insane. I still have to see how he plays out. I don't know what he's like. I didn't get to play any pugs or, or scrims or, or, or tests with the new Mauga. But yeah, feedback from players when Mauga was available to try during his free preview weekend. So we've adjusted his kit for his official launch to give him the ability to last longer in a fight. For Ramatra, see what I did there? <laughs> Ramatra traded 100 health for 100 armor. Another buff, 30% damage reduction off the top. It also does add in uh, Omnic, uh, what's it called? The transformed form as well. I don't right, think I showed replacing it. Replacing 100 of his base white health to 100 armor instead. His so yeah, when you transform and he goes to 675, he does get an extra, a couple of blocks of um, his nemesis form. He does get extra armor in there as well. So this is actually a buff in both forms. His void accelerator projectile size is being increased from point. Okay, look where this is. The projectile size being increased in this form, the mage form, his omnic form. It misses here in the before from this far away. Then watch it here. Zero seven five to it's still hitting on the right side. Thicker, it means it's easier to hit. Right there, that's basically the edge. Yeah, two heads away. Just trying to show it off a little bit. It's definitely, you can definitely notice the thicker, the thickness of it. It'll help the reliability of it. Five per projectile. Five per projectile, another not 10% DPS, 20% DPS upgrade on the poke version, right? A little bit, more than 20, 25%. Sorry, I can't do math. The devs comment that Ramatra is quite powerful during his nemesis form, though his base Omnic form may be too easy to ignore for a tank hero. We're adding some power there to even out the trade-offs between the two forms, with the Omnic form having better range damage while nemesis form's pummel can pierce enemy defenses. Sigma, a slight nerf here to his experimental barrier where the regeneration rate is being reduced from 100 to 85 health per second. Honestly, pretty negligible. Well, not really. It's 680 HP here in the same time. It's 580. It starts adding up quite a bit over a long period of time. Although I will say Sigma is one of the safest heroes to play. So much mitigation. Besides the shield regeneration, if you cycle it with your suck long enough, you should be able to to uh, offset the the shield going down a little bit faster. Eh, it's it's not too bad of a nerf. I think Sigma is still pretty good. Second, the devs comment that Sigma has very effective defensive options between his experimental barrier and kinetic. Oh, void accelerator is not 4.5, not 4. Oh, I might have messed up the the thing at the top. Then that's a okay. grasp. The barrier regeneration is being reduced. Also, my clips just had shit quality here. It went like 360p here for some reason. But Winston is Tesla ignore. cannon weapon now ignores armor damage reduction. The devs comment that this is a special property for okay. the Tesla cannon intended to increase Winston's effectiveness against other tanks with large armor health pools. He still won't specialize in dealing with tanks. That is very good in this matchup. The, the support meta is Anna Brig, because Anna Brig is the safest option with the Sleep Dart, Nade, Bash, Whip Shot of Brig to protect the Ana to survive a Winston, Sombra Tracer, Winston, Tracer, Genji, any sort of like coordinated dive. The only way to survive was playing Ana Brig and giving Winston true damage against armor, like a special property like this, makes Winston really good against that. Now, once I go through the patch notes, give my thoughts on the meta, but base, this is the last tank buff, but Doom and Winston getting buffed like this will probably mean a dive meta, especially on Asia top 500 ladder. But I do think Ramatra and Mauga 
will still be really good in the lower ranks because they're really hard to kill. It's gonna be a mix between that, yeah. And they nerfed Sigma, but the, I actually don't think, like Sigma is a very, is a, is a resistant hero to a lot of metas, but he's very poke and I think he's good because of like Baptiste and stuff, but like if other things get buffed, they actually didn't even need to nerf Sigma and he wouldn't get played as much. He would actually go back to Winston. Believe it or not, they didn't even have to nerf this. Other tanks with large armor. And then we're gonna get the Tracer who also got buffed, which reinforces the dive. Despite these Ramatra and these Junker Queen and these whatever buffs, it's gonna be dive at the higher levels. He still won't Means specialize no. in dealing with tanks since his singular target damage. So this is funny because infectedness against other tanks with large armor pools, but any good Winston worth their salt knows you don't focus on zapping an armored tank in the front. You're literally supposed to take your space and isolate back lines, and this will help the back line, like annoyance of dealing with Brig in the back. Being able to deal true damage and like without the 30% damage reduction on the DPS means he actually builds primal quicker too. So not only does this buff it in those matchups, it means getting a faster primal um, helps with like your sequencing with uh, with with how you uh, take team fights at the high level. So yeah, Winston's really good. Like he was already good. The only reason why he was not played as much was because the healing was obscene in combination with those Bastion buffs last season. With all the obscene healing with like Baptiste Ilari holding like a single target beam on the Bastion with Ilari and Pylon pumping the Bastion with Baptiste pumping the Bastion with a lamp. Bastion made Winston hard to play, but we've already nerfed Bastion, and we've nerfed Alari's pylon HP from 40 to 30. The single target beam has been nerfed. Baptiste healing hasn't been nerfed as much, but like getting rid of those and nerfing the Bastion like A36 and all the other things already was going to make Winston start to be played a bit more. And he was already fine. He's already been like really good in Overwatch too. He was just fallen out because of indirect reasons. If he was good, they buff other things to be better, which made him bad. But then they nerfed these things down. They decided to buff Winston back up a little bit in these matchups. So they kind of go and, and opposite directions and this is gonna make a meta but it will be less of an extreme disadvantage onto the dps for may her endothermic blaster maximum ammo is being reduced from okay. 150 to 120. the devs comment that we're reducing the max ammo to limit how long may is able to continuously to test of secondary target now that the can you write that in the mythbuster in the discord before i forget umari we're gonna do that primary fire deals more damage uh Good nerfs Soldier Before I forget it, yeah. Okay, so the main nerf, this is fine. 120 ammo instead of 150. Your poke only costs 10 when you poke with icicle, so that's that's not changed. Um, but it does allow you to not be as like you know, as brain off as just holding M1 or your primary fire with a slow beam. So a little ammo nerf is okay. Good nerfs. Soldier okay. 76, the biotic field cooldown is being increased from 15 to 18. It's actually pretty funny that doing that. Comment that soldier's self sustainability is potent and makes him difficult to deal with while he's. This this cooldown is longer than protection Suzu. I think I saw that on Twitter, which is funny. Although I will say, the f how long does biotic field last? Is it five seconds or six seconds? The cooldown starts a minute you put it down, not when it expires. So even though it looks like it's 18 seconds, I think it lasts six seconds. So it's actually a 12 second cooldown. It used to be nine, I believe, unless I'm mistaken. The devs comment that soldier's self-sustainability is potent and makes him difficult to deal with while he's in its area. Rather than reduce its raw healing output again, oh, it's we're five increasing seconds. the amount okay. of time between consecutive uses to open up longer periods of vulnerability. For you Sombra, get the idea. The EMP, big buff here, where the ability lockout duration, aka the silencing part, is increased from 1.5 to 3 seconds before you can use anything. The damage is being reduced though from 30% to 25% of current health. This one's pretty minor nerf. The stronger nerf is actually disabling abilities for three seconds instead of 1.5. This is still a net buff. Three seconds of being silenced to make it feel more of an ultimate ability. It's not a bad idea in theory, but it's just frustrating to play against. Three seconds is long though. So like Sombra buffs with Winston, like Sombra Tracer, Winston, Sombra Tracer, Doom may be in line, my friends. The damage is being reduced though from 30% to 25% of current health. The devs comment that the 1.5 second lockout duration originally didn't feel impactful enough for an ultimate ability, but generally EMP is more interesting and effective when it's focused on Interesting and effective when it's focused on disabling. It's interesting and effective for Sombra. Frustrating as fuck for everybody. Interesting, effective, and frustrating when it's focused on disabling. On the disabling <laughs> Forgot to add that part. Rather than the damage. 
For Torbjorn, his overload, the over health that he gets from it is being increased from 75 to 100. Hey, okay, it used to the be this, by the way. The health decrease on overload severely impacted Torb's overall effectiveness, so we're actually reverting that change. For That's Tracer, okay. her damage is being increased from 5.5 to 6 per bullet. The devs... 10% DPS buff again. So it used to go up and down. It was at six at the beginning of Overwatch, uh, beginning of the seasons, and Tracer was perma-picked, by the way, with Winston. Comment that the damage value has been changed a few times over the course of Overwatch 2 and is now back to Tracer's original damage. It was previously adjusted due to a couple of bugs with the pulse pistol falloff range and spread being much better than they should have. Now on to support, Baptiste, the biotic launcher primary so yeah this is uh i mean she was already still okay at 5.5 makes her 10 percent better as well 10 percent dps buff per bullet getting a little dangerous primary fire ammo is being reduced from 45 to 36. that means he's going from 15 shots to 12 shots because you shoot three round bursts quick math that's okay this is not even a big nerf as a baptiste player this is fine Brig, the whip shot damage is being reduced from 80 to 70. so you're telling me winston is back to true damage against armor like Brig, and then her whip shot's actually gonna do less, which changes some break points on like the whip shot swing swing bash combo with whip shot. 80, swing swing, 35, 35 is 70. With bash is 200 on the dot. Now it does 190. For Kiriko, the healing Ofuda projectile speed is being increased from 14 to 18 meters per second. So at least that's nice the target a little bit quicker. The protection Suzu, the invulnerability duration itself is being reduced. Honestly, 0.85 to 0.65 is a lot relative percentage, but like it actually doesn't it doesn't feel that much. Like okay, look look for the look for the the white glow, okay? Itself is being reduced. It ended now on the right side, but it's still going on here. Reduced from 0.85 to 0. It's so fast anyways. Suzu, the invulnerability duration itself is being reduced from 0.85 to 0.65. You seconds. slightly see it, but... However, <laughs> the healing explosion is being increased from 40 to 80 health. And the change from a few seasons ago meant that if you Suzu'd while under a negative status effect, you would heal another 30 HP. So that means your healing explosion is 80 health normally and can go up to 110 health if you Suzu a burn or a poison or an anti-nade. Burn as in dynamite, Malga burn, poison as in like Widow's Venom Mine. You heal 110 on Suzu now if you get team anti'd. That's pretty strong. It used to be 50 flat healing on Suzu back in the day. I actually think Suzu is a good enough ability to not even need this bonus effect. 110 healing, man. That is more than even previous Ana nade. That's more than half the health of like 200 HP heroes, right? Yeah. They think the thing is, I think they always look at win rates and and and, and data. And Kiriko traditionally performs pretty well, a uh, pretty poor and lower ranks because she's just very hard to play. She's a very hard hero. To, to get consistent good value with her with their kunais. A lot of people struggle to like track with the healing because their aim isn't great. Kiriko, it's okay. I, I'm a firm believer it's okay to have heroes that are high skill ceiling and perform poorly in low ranks but do better at high ranks. But they're, they're, they're starting to like simplify that by making it 110 flat healing. That kind of adds into the healing creep, 110. I, I, I don't agree with that part of the change. I think it's fine to make the Ofuda projectiles go quicker. That probably is nice. Um, but like the Suzu thing, I don't think they need to do that. comment that reducing the projection Suzu and vulnerability time further will help it feel less frustrating to play against, but still enable it to have big playmaking moments, although with a stricter timing requirement. Yeah, the stricter time requirement, it is still, it is pretty fast, 0.65, but as long as, like, any good player can, can, can time it, I mean, outside of having a bad ping or bad ping to your, to your, to the game, like, you're playing 200 ping and trying to time a Suzu to Diva Bomb, you might mess up, but, like, anybody playing in their local area would not have a problem to Suzu, like, important things. For Mercy, activating Valkyrie no longer disconnects Caduceus staff from its target. That's a huge okay. quality of life buff. The devs comment that this is just a... I didn't realize how annoying it is. I don't play that much Mercy, but like the fact that if I have beam somebody and then the moment I press my alt, my beam will automatically tether to the next people is nice instead of having to re-click something. I don't know how big of a... I know it's a nice quality of life change, but I don't know how impactful it is. It's certainly impactful, but like I'm trying to see like the, the depth of the impact. Oh, I guess it's bad when they die in that small 
0.5 seconds, you activate the Valkyrie. It's like a 0.5 second activation, but you heal 60 HP per second or 55 HP. It's almost 30 HP they lose, I suppose, by going through the Valkyrie animation and then re-finding re the target plus a little latency. It is probably 30 to 40 HP then. So yeah, I can definitely see the impact. That's a nice, that's a nice change. It took forever. That's it for the balance changes specifically. There's also a lot of bug fixes. I'm not going to go through them all, but there is one of them that has in-game implications, which is the Sombra virus through Baptiste's amplification matrix. Yeah, this is what it used to do. We talked about this, or Patrick, I remember saying like in Overwatch 2, they coded it where the impact damage was amplified because it's normally 10 damage on impact and then 100 damage over time with the virus. So the double, the it only doubled the impact and not the damage over time. Really not a big difference, but now they fixed it. So virus effectively does do double damage for everything like so. Yep, if you receive no healing and a Sombra fires it through BAP window, you're dead. Any 200 HP hero that has no self-healing or any any person peeling, it's actually pretty juicy now. New in Season 8 is extra reticle okay, settings thing. for heroes with multiple weapons. So the following heroes now have new options. We have Ana, Ash, Bastion, Lifeweaver, Mercy, Ramatra, and Widowmaker. So now you can use a small circle for Ramatra's Omnic Void Accelerator and then swap to a big circle for his Pummel Punches, for example. For the map changes, there's supposed to be a holiday decorations to the following maps, Pariso, New Queen Street, and Watchpoint Gibraltar, but they weren't loaded in the early access. Why Ana? It's scoped and unscoped, that's right. Um, there's, yeah, I was saying here that they didn't show, I couldn't see the holiday decorations in the preview test server that I was on, so I can't show that, but I did, I could show you the Antarctica morning server I had, so you'll have to wait until it was available though, so this is what it looks like. Nice and bright. Although the underground one, is this sub base? No change here, because we're fucking underground. It doesn't matter if there's light in here, right? <laughs> and that's it for the hero and balance side of things. The fun stuff this season is the Battle of the- Okay, and I, I read this manually on the patch notes anyways earlier. Okay, and that is the patch note coverage of my opinion. Karku's opinion of the season eight patch. Remember to play it tomorrow, December 5th, 2023.